Hey everybody, it's Pat and Frankie here in the Engine Power Shop, and today we're going to show you how to do something we get a ton of questions about, setting and measuring the oil clearances inside your engine. All right, what Frankie is referring to is something we do get a lot of questions about, and that is actually setting up our bearing clearances for the correct application. Now, today there's a lot to it, but we always get questions on how we do it, and more importantly, how we adjust it if we don't feel it is proper for the application. So today we're going to go over the whole thing, all the steps from getting it prepped to getting it measured to what to do when we have to adjust it. Vertical oil clearance, mostly referring to main and rod bearing clearance, is the distance between the journal itself and the bearings where the oil film provides support, make sure there's no metal to metal contact. Now this is extremely important to get right, but the process is pretty much the same whether you're working on a lawnmower engine or a race car engine. And the first and most important step is to have everything properly prepped and very, very clean. That's extremely important. So. Just because something looks clean doesn't mean it actually is. We're gonna go through and wipe everything down with a low lint paper towel. You don't wanna use a cotton towel, you wanna to use paper because paper is soluble in oil. So if any debris or fibers get left from the towel, the oil will actually dissolve it and it can get it into the filter where it's not gonna hurt anything. So one thing that we always do is wipe down all of our bearings. Again, just because they look clean doesn't mean they are. Just wanna go through don't touch the face of the bearing with your bare hands if you can help it. You're gonna wipe it off on the front and the back. We're doing this because any bit of debris that's left could give you inaccurate measurements. It's gonna take up space behind or on top of the bearing and potentially give you a incorrect measurement. So you can see that even though this looks clean, a little bit came off there. So we'll do that for every single bearing. We're also gonna do this for the main caps, especially where the bearing rides. This is called the bearing saddle. We're gonna give that a nice wipe there and we want to make sure that the mating surfaces of the cap are clean, oil free, there's no debris and if they have this nice register here on a four bolt design we want to make sure that is nice and clean as well. Again make sure there's no debris, no oil, nothing behind the bearing surface. For the fasteners these are extremely important to prep as well. For this application we have a stud and a bolt but we want to make sure the underhead of the bolt is completely clean. We also want to make sure that our washers and nuts are completely clean. So both sides of the washer need to be clean and dry. And when we add lubrication to the washer, we only want it to be on the top side. We want the bottom side to be nice and dry. That way it prevents the washer from spinning, which could potentially render your torque readings inaccurate, overstress the fastener, potentially damage it or the threads in the block. Okay, we have everything prepped on this side, but we still have some prep to do on the block side as well. That's correct. We have to maintain the same level of cleanliness everywhere. So what we're going to do on the block is the same thing we've done over there. These have a removable dowel, so we're going to get in there and we're going to clean where the main cap actually sets and on both parting lines. You have to make sure there are no burrs in there because if the cap sets up on a burr, it will give an inaccurate measurement. Also, we're going to clean that saddle. It does look clean, but we have a lacquer thinner rag here. And if we get after it a little bit, Yep, you're going to see that it does have some dirt and debris on it. And remember, we are measuring in ten thousandths of an inch, so even that little bit will affect its measurement. Okay, we have our cleaned bearings. We've got the cap side loaded in and our block side. Now, if you don't know which is which, the side with the groove and the oil feed hole goes into the block that supplies oil to the engine. And the cap side has no groove to provide the most amount of surface area because this sees the most amount of load. Now, there is a tang on the bearings. All this does is locate the bearing. It does not keep it from spinning. Bearing spread is what holds it into the saddle, and bearing crush, when the two halves are torqued together, that's what keeps it from spinning. So we'll get this installed, just gently slide it into the saddle, make sure the tang is lined up, kind of snap it in place there, make sure each side is as flush as you can get it. And then on this block we have a doweled cap, so we can just go ahead and set it on the dowels and it's properly located immediately. And we'll tap it down gently. This makes sure that the cap is perfectly square before we try to torque it down. If you try to draw it down with the fasteners, you could potentially put the cap in crooked, damage the cap, damage the block, and we don't want any of that. Now on this application, it's an aftermarket race block. We have studs on the inners and bolts on the outer. So what we're gonna do is with the proper lube on them, we're gonna screw these in there and just kind of get them down to where they're supposed to be. 
Wow. And then we're going to put our bolts in afterwards. While we're down here, it's important to note that there is a forward way the cap goes on. Usually they are marked with either an arrow or a marking to designate front, and the cap is numbered for its location. Usually that is true for all aftermarket blocks and most OEM ones, but if it is not marked and you notice it is not marked, you have to not only mark the location of the cap and the direction that the cap is on its, as far as orientation, because the way the cap was on it, and when it was line board and a line hone, that is important because if you get it wrong and put the cap on backwards or in the wrong location, the engine simply won't turn over once it's torqued down. Okay, critical note about the fasteners in the mains or rods is that when you are measuring oil bearing clearance, and when you're assembling the engine, you have to use the fasteners that the block was a line honed or a line board with. You can't just switch the fasteners out, go from studs to bolts or something like that. You can totally change the dimensions of the block and therefore the oil clearance if you do that. So this block was a line board with the studs and bolts. These are an ARP stud, so we're using ARP's lube. If you have a bolt with a washer, there will be a chamfer on the washer and that goes towards the head of the bolt. If you're using a stud, it will be parallel ground or be flat on both sides with no chamfer. Set the washers on. And again, these are dry on the bottom and dry on the cap. And then we will apply the lube to the top of the washer and the threads. Get a nice coating on there like this. Not one sure proper lubrication and accurate torquing. Now also, torque is extremely important, right? If it's not torqued properly and torqued like it was when it was a line board or line hone, that makes a huge difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque these from the inside out, our studs first, our bolts second. So the inners are torqued to 80 pound feet. So we'll get it set up. It's important to do it evenly because you just don't want to go for the gusto right on one to the other. So you get them to a point where you can get about a quarter turn on your torque wrench. Perfect. And then our outers are torqued to 80 as well. Snug. And again, about a quarter turn on your wrench. Nice and smooth. now we're ready to measure. Okay, now we're gonna get into the really technical part, the measuring part. Now there's several different ways that you could do this. People have different theories and processes and, and that's fine, but this is the way that we've found is the absolute easiest. The least amount of problems are introduced doing it this way and therefore it is the most accurate. So we're gonna take our micrometer and measure the journal starting out. So we're gonna do this usually in a couple different places all over the journal, we're gonna use the largest measurement that we get. This will ensure that we're getting the minimum oil clearance that we can. So this measurement, normally you will take this and write it down for your records. We write every measurement that we get down, but this is now set and locked in place. We're gonna use this to zero out our dial bore gauge. There's several different levels of dial bore gauge that you can have. You can have inexpensive ones or very expensive ones. As long as they are set up correctly and read to the 10 thousandths of an inch, they will work for what we are trying to do. So we're going to take this, we're actually going to use it to zero out the gauge. So when we're doing this, we want to basically get it to the smallest measurement or get the needle as far as we can to the right. And then we will adjust it for our zero. That would be a cutaway there to the gauge. It's all right. Okay, so now the dial bore gauge is set to the exact size of the journal. So when we put it inside the housing bore, it's gonna give us a direct oil clearance measurement. There's no math involved. There's no figuring out what needs to be what. The micrometer almost doesn't even have to have a number on it because we used it to do a direct setting. So now any measurement we get inside the bearings is our actual vertical oil clearance. So we'll take our dial bore gauge, gently slide it inside the bearings. And then just like the journals, we're gonna measure this in a couple different points and look for the tightest measurement in this instance. So right there, that's 21 10 thousandths. And that is the tightest point. We're always gonna measure this vertically because if you take it and measure it at a different angle, 
like that, even in the same spot, it is three thousandths there. So the tightest point is always going to be in the vertical position, so that is how we're going to measure it. Now, I know it's a little bit bigger at the parting line, but that is by design. The bearings are not defective. If you measure any bearing, they're always made a little bit thinner on the parting line. It's called making them in an eccentric. And the reason being, when an engine is running, especially high performance engines, this has a lot of force on it and it pulls that parting line in towards each other. So if the bearings were actually circles, it would have insufficient oil clearance at the parting line. And we can't have that. That would obviously cause a failure. Now, if you're talking about oil clearance, what should it be? Well, generally on high performance applications, we consider the minimum to be one thousandths of an inch of clearance per inch of diameter of the shaft. So if we have a crankshaft that is two inch and five hundred thousandths for a general reference, you'd want two and a half thousandths of bearing clearance. And generally, if we're doing a high, high performance application, something with big power output, we will add a half thousandths to that. But what if you need to adjust it? You, there is a way to do it without doing a ton of machine work to the crank or the block, and that is with high performance extra and 1,000 smaller bearing sets. So this top one here will give you a 1,000 tighter oil clearance, and the bottom, the one with the X, will give you 1,000 extra. And these can be used individually for each journal depending on how you need to adjust them, and they can be used in half thousands increments. And the reason they can be in half thousands increments because the bearings themselves are very, very tight tolerances. People seem to think that if you use one or the other, like if you use a half of one and use a standard in the other, either going up or down, it leaves a ledge on the edge. Now remember, because that is not an edge, because there is extra clearance there, it really doesn't make a difference. And again, we're talking in 10 thousandths of an inch, but this is a great way to adjust your crankshaft's clearances up or down to get exactly what you want for your application. Yeah, that's right. So this process is very simple when you break it down, and this is the same for, again, any engine that you're working on and really any oil clearance that you're trying to measure, whether it's the mains, the rods, the cam, the lifters, whatever. The process of measuring the oil clearance is the same, so you can use this in your next engine build. Everything you do should have the same level of attention to detail, whether it's a lawnmower or a full bore race bullet. This is how you save your hard earned money and do things correctly. That's right. So if you like this tech talk, comment below what topic you want us to do next. Make sure you hit the subscribe and the like buttons and hit the notification bell so you get notified about new episodes dropping on this channel. Now go build something cool.